Welcome to another scriptural study. In this scriptural study, we will be sharing how noble Bereans all over earth, with whom we continue to get the privilege of studying the scriptures with, prepare themselves in advance, or better stated, ensure that they secure advanced discernment as it relates to the scriptural and astronomical timing of trumpets and the scriptural astronomical turn of the year with the signs in the Shemaim which are given to us annually which are from our Father of Lights with His sun, moon, and stars to tell time. More specifically, the appointed times of Yahuwah, which includes the festival of trumpets and or Yom Teruah, and the turn of the year. As always, please ensure your mobile device, iPad, and or computer screen is configured to full view and or full screen mode. And as always, please stop the video to further focus on the scriptural, etymological, and astronomical information being shared. This scriptural study will include the relevant scriptural passages as they relate to the timing and the numbering of our days to trumpets and the true turn of the year, along with a brief etymological breakdown of key scriptural words as it relates to this specific appointed time period. And then how anyone on their very own can forecast and or discern in advance with the sole intention and purpose of getting outside in creation to test and prove, to further verify, again, outside, under the heavens, if you will, year after year, on just how the sun, moon, and stars provide repetitive celestial signs, which announce the festival of trumpets and a scriptural turn of the year in the same consistent manner on the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah annually. Because isn't it true that the scripture states that the sun, moon, and stars were placed in the expanse of the heavens from our Father of Lights and that they are to be for signs and that these signs produced from the light of the sun, moon, and stars together as one would announce the appointed times, and as well that these signs would announce days and years. If we look closer with the etymological details of the scriptural word signs from the book of Bereshith, or Genesis, chapter 1, verse 14, we will quickly discover that this word, as defined in the Strong's Concordance under H226, is oath. Yes, very much like the English word promise and or covenant, which carries the definition and or translation as a pledge or witness, which is wondrous because the origin and or root of the word oath is known as avah which means to sign mark and or describe with a mark please remember this throughout the study furthermore did not the prophet daniel thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that our Father of Lights provides as well? Hallelujah that the prophet Daniel knew 
that the sun, moon, and stars from Yahuwah produces a promise of wondrous signs in the heavens. Yes, that great expanse. As Daniel literally utilized the Hebraic word, as we can see from the Strong's H852 entry, that describes what the sun, moon, and stars do, which meant that all three witnesses together as one were to be for signs and are miraculous signs, which are wonders. Yes, the word the prophet Daniel utilized for signs directly corresponds to the word for signs in Bereshith or Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. Just as the theological word book of the Old Testament verifies in Aramaic on page 991, with the words, miraculous signs and wonders. And if we look further into the Paleo-Hebrew, we quickly learn that there were two letters for the word signs. And the first letter for the word signs was actually the first original letter of the Hebraic language known as the Aleph, which was silent and carried the meaning of an ox and our bull. Yes, a leader with strength. While the second and last letter of the word for signs was the last letter of the original Hebraic alphabet, which was known as the Tau, which represented a mark, a sign, or cross, as in X marks the spot, so to speak which also carried the meaning of ownership, to seal, as in a promise, and or a covenant. And for those that enjoy the study of etymology with the Hebraic paleopictographs, we find the very same two letters. Yes, the Aleph and Ta still represents the word for signs, as per what the prophet Daniel shared. And as per the ancient Hebrew lexicon definitions, the pictograph of the first letter known as the Aleph is a picture of an ox, while the last and 22nd letter, the Tau, is a picture of two cross sticks used to make a sign or mark. And the Klein Dictionary on page 60 refers to the Aleph and Tau as a cutting instrument usually rendered by a plowshare. And of course, a sign and or mark. Combined, these pictures represent an ox moving toward a mark. In ancient times, when plowing a field with oxen, the plowman drove the oxen towards a distant mark in order to keep the furrow straight with the intention of producing the highest yield possible. And is this why our only teacher, the Messiah Yahushua himself, utilized this example? Was this illustration from the past that the Messiah used intended to produce the highest yield possible, so to speak? Hallelujah that the prophet Daniel knew about the signs. Yes, the wonders in the heavens and their purpose of producing the highest yield possible. So now, let's look at the sign, the mark, if you will, with the sun, moon, and stars as it relates to preparing and having advanced discernment for trumpets and the turn of the year with the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah by utilizing all of the scriptural witnesses of light to establish this matter of scriptural signs that can be seen in their consistent patterns in the heavens year after year. And of course, starting with Abib, yes, the first of the annual feasts and appointed time period at the start of a scriptural year. And finally, the last of the annual feasts in the fall 
appointed time period, which is announced by those gathering at the festival of trumpets. Hallelujah for the first, the Aleph, and the last, the Tau, which can be observed and thus numbered, calculated, and measured. Yes, verified and proven in creation annually, with a set-apart gathering on the first day of the seventh month. Yes, on that festival day of remembrance, of blowing trumpets at the time of the new moon, at the full moon. Yes, the first day of the seventh new moon is a day of remembrance and was ordained to be a witness forever in the Shamayim. Yes, we are to gather in order to shout an alarm, like and with the horn of a ram made into a trumpet that emits a beautiful sound, like a cornet at the dawn, at the beginning of brightness, in the fourth night watch of the seventh new moon before the first gate towards the east of the seventh new moon just as the scriptures describe in the book of Benmanbar, now known today as the book of numbers and it states that in the seventh month on the first day of the seventh month we have a set-apart gathering with no servile work, as it is a day of blowing trumpets for us, just as the scriptural witnesses from the book of Bem and Bar, now known today as Numbers, and the book of Praises, now known today as the book of Psalms, verifies quite clearly. And hallelujah! that noble Bereans are well more than 100% confident that the scriptural witnesses of light do indeed provide the signs for the first day of the first month of Abib, let alone for the first day of the seventh month of Yom Teruah. Just as we verified this year on the pagan day of Wednesday, April 8th, 2020, at dawn, yes, Abib, known as Spika today, was once again in alignment with the first new moon of the scriptural year, while the star, known as Hamal in Aramaic, known in Hebrew as the Lamb, and or scripturally as the Morning Star, was in alignment with the sun. And of course, the rest of the scriptural witnesses of light were in their proper position to announce the celestial sign of Abib, as they do annually. And as we have shared in all of our videos since 2013 and articles before this time period, yes, we must always be cognizant of the relationship and or position of Abib, known as Spika today, and the Morning Star, known as the Lamb and or Hamal, when it comes to the purpose and intent of numbering our days correctly. Because the full moon phase is the only moon phase that does indeed shine through the whole night, just as Hanok stated and as verified by what the psalmist stated, let alone easily proven astronomically. Yes, only a full moon rules the whole night through, with the stars, as the Father of Light's kindness is indeed everlasting. Just as many Bereans this year went outside at sunset, just before the first watch, seeing Hamal set, the Lamb, along with the seven-star cluster known as Pleiades and Orion. Of course, Ursa Major the Bear in Job chapter 38 was circling counterclockwise, Polaris, the North Star, and the moon the whole night through shone and ruled with the star known as Spica. 
as we can see here, all the way to just before the dawn. Yes, just before sunrise. And what about six months later? Can we prepare for trumpets and the turn of the year in advance with scriptural, etymological, and astronomical discernment? Didn't Hanok state that there would indeed be 177 days from the first portal in the first season, which is always a beeb. And 177 days later, this count from Hanok would indeed take us to our day of remembrance and set apart gathering on the first day of the seventh month. Yes, Yom Teruah. And for those that do go outside in creation with all four night watches to study the word, to prove just how the scriptural witnesses of light in creation also establish this matter of the annual Hanok 177 day count from Abib. Yes, these noble Bereans all over earth proved that the wondrous celestial sign for Abib could be seen in creation with film and photograph footage, which did indeed announce Abib everywhere on the pagan day of Wednesday, April 8th, 2020. And for those that do indeed prove all things and then hold fast to what is good, they have fully prepared with scriptural, etymological, and astronomical discernment in advance. And hallelujah that Yom Teruah will take place this year on the pagan day of Friday, October 2nd. Everywhere. And hallelujah we once again look extremely forward to receive all of the wonderful photographs and film footage from noble Bereans all over earth that will actually get outside under the heavenly veil, yes, the firmament, and thus once again prove what the sun, moon, and stars actually do for Yom Teruah in the same manner they consistently do year after year. Yes, the Yom Teruah of Ah, known as the annual trumpet's celestial sign that is indeed wondrous, just as the prophet Daniel knew. Yes, once again, like in all years, for Yom Teruah, the scriptural witnesses of light will show this celestial sign and or mark. And do we remember, with the first day of the first month of Abib, that the moon was in alignment with Abib, now known today as the star Spica, ruling the night. And the star known as the Lamb, yes, the morning star, was in alignment with the sun for this time period as well. And, as we previously have shared, six scriptural months later, just as the Hanok 177 day count stated, we will see an astronomically opposite configuration, just like on any clock within a six-hour time frame per se. And in this case, the celestial clock that moves counterclockwise now shows Abib no longer in alignment with the moon, but rather in alignment with the sun, the greater light. While the morning star, known as the Lamb, will now be in alignment with the moon, ruling the night, just as it is for Yom Teruah, always for a first day, seventh month, trumpets, celestial sign. Because only the full moon phase rules with the stars, as anyone on earth on their very own can prove in creation annually, with the full moon and the star Abib ruling the night, 
which reveals only part of the first day, first month of Abib, celestial sign. And again, only if you know what to scripturally look for throughout the four night watches, especially the fourth. Now let's take a look of how the moon will rule with the star known as Hamal the whole night through along with the rest of the scriptural witnesses of light for a first day seventh month celestial sign. Notice how the moon rules with Hamal and the rest of the scriptural stars in my hometown the night before Yom Teruah. And even in Jerusalem, Israel, it will not be any different as well as we can see here. And the same in Rio de Janeiro, South America. So, now you know why noble Bereans attempt to do their very best to motivate and inspire folks to get outside and prove this for themselves in order to eliminate the non-scriptural one witness approach. And worse yet, a two only witness approach with all of the various solar lunar models that rob people of when a beeb actually begins, let alone the seventh month. Just as we have covered so many times now in the past seven years on this YouTube channel, especially with this latest clip, entitled, The Full Moon as New Moon Anomaly. That explains the ensuing chaos and disorder of a partial and hubris non-scriptural approach. So, as we can see, we can indeed prepare and secure scriptural discernment in advance for Yom Teruah, let alone prove it. And as always, and for good reason, folks always ask about the past with excellent questions like if these wondrous signs were the same all through time with Yom Teruah. And most of the requests, to date anyway, have been to provide astronomical visuals which have revolved around the common era time period of AD 08 to AD 44. And the folks asking these questions are always overjoyed to learn that the Yom Teruah celestial sign has not changed ever. And that there was no longer any reason to be led astray in this matter. Because with the Father of Lights, there is no change nor shadow of turning in the future. However, in 1997, we were further introduced to the inner workings of the extreme worldwide religious traditions of man that has regrettably existed all through time with false prophets that ignore the signs of the sun, moon, and stars as aligned to the seasons with the concise and repetitive scriptural, spiritual, and agricultural harvest cycle. And in 2008, we witnessed firsthand the massive chaos and despair false prophets can have on so many others, as all of the proposed partial prophetic timelines, all together as one, which have been filtered through the man-made tradition of Christianity with what is called their five methods, which regrettably have had people incorrectly focus only on the time periods of AD 30 to AD 33, and some to AD 36, from what they erroneously call the crucifixion of Jesus, including the numerous and very distressing non-scriptural partial prophetic timeline calculations based on the time period of Tiberius. And since we started to track this activity from 1997 up to and including this very day, 
thousands of private interpretations have come and gone. And as everyone knows, causing the followers of these partial prophetic timeline groups to become stunned, like a deer in despair, when caught in front of a set of headlights, asking, how did this happen? And all because they are totally unaware on how to have discernment with the scriptural signs of light that already prepare us annually for Yom Teruah, let alone prepare us in advance for the last great day that takes place annually on the 22nd day of the seventh month. Furthermore, and as per scripture, we can know that whatever the Almighty Father of Lights does is forever. There is no adding to it, and there is no taking from it. Hallelujah that for every matter there is an appointed time. And hallelujah that time proves everything. Because isn't it true that a stork in the heavens knows her appointed times, let alone a turtle dove? And is it not true that all of Yahuwah's creatures consistently observe the time of their coming in their proper seasons, in which the sun, moon, and stars provide the wondrous signs of discernment that each of Yahuwah's creatures trust to make that journey and or migration annually. And hallelujah that noble Bereans do indeed know the reasons why the many today act like the scribes in the past with their false pens. And yes, those scribes who are still in the world today, who are regrettably attempting to rewrite scripture with their false pens, and thus openly and publicly rejecting what our Father of Lights provides to discern the times. Was this not the same message that the Messiah, Yahushua, was sharing with the Sadducees and Pharisees? So again, and as we have seen, Yahuwah does indeed provide everything scripturally, etymologically, astronomically, and on earth with its designed repetitive seasons to have us fully prepared in advance for the coming of Yom Teruah annually. And finally, we were asked to provide more astronomical details about what the scripture defines as the true turn and or true turning of the year. As we only covered this topic briefly two years ago in this scriptural study video. So now, let's explore what it means scripturally and astronomically as it relates to the festival of trumpets and the turn of the year. As we can read in the book of Shemoth, now known today as the book of Exodus. Yes. What do the sun, moon, and scriptural stars actually do as a celestial sign to notify us that this time period, which takes place during the turn of the year, from the first day of the seventh month of Yom Teruah, Atonement, and the eight-day feast of ingathering known as Sukkot, all the way up to and including the 22nd day of the seventh month, which is numbered as an eighth day, known scripturally as the last great day annually. Because isn't it true that the turn of the year occurs during the festival of ingathering? at the outgoing of the year, meaning the final feast time period of the year. And isn't it true with a simple etymological word search that anyone can learn that the original scriptural word for outgoing was yatsa, literally meaning to go out, 
come out, exit, and or go forth. And isn't it true that the Hebraic pictographic etymology from the ancient Hebrew lexicon reveals the same thing? Along with other ancient languages as per the Brown Driver Briggs resource? And isn't it scripturally true that the word turn, as in the turn of the year, utilizes an original Hebrew word known as takufa, which meant coming around, which means a turning circuit of time or space. Yes, a turning circuit. And isn't it also true that the root word origin of the word takufa is nakaf, which means to go around or compass around, let alone to make the round and or complete the circuit. And yes, the ancient Hebrew pictographic language reveals the same definition. While the Brown Driver Briggs resource provides extreme clarity by its definition of making the round and or completing the circuit with a scriptural example directly from the book of Eob, now known today as the book of Job, with the words, when the days of feasting had gone around. Hallelujah that the sun, moon, and stars reveal the turning circuit, known as the Tekufa, just as Eob further verified in chapter 38, and just how the scriptural stars bring out the Maseroth, the bear and its sons, in its proper seasons, as they are perfectly aligned to the feasts in their proper seasons as well. And there are astronomical reasons why Eob would rise early in the morning, in the fourth watch, towards the dawn, to observe all of this activity with the sun, moon, and stars. Even the prophet Yahshayahu was aware of how trumpets and the feast of ingathering was when the circuit and circle of the yearly feasts was ended as per the findings in the Jacenius resource. Yes, indeed, the circuit, the Takufa, reveals when the true spring begins, with the bowl pouring out its water onto the planted seeds during Abib. And then, 177 days later, just as Hanok had stated, the annual festival of trumpets and into the feast of ingathering reveals that the bowl is being filled with the harvest, just as the celestial signs witness year after year at the true turn of the year. Hallelujah for the scriptural witnesses of the festival of ingathering, let alone the etymological witnesses, that it is indeed an ingathering harvest, where we assemble together as one at the turning mouth, yes, at the rim and or lips of the bowl, which circle around, as the bowl is utilized for gathering things together and for eating, just as the ancient Hebrew pictographs highlight. Because, isn't it true, this was the same annual time period that even Jacob, later named Yashriel, had everyone gather together, so that he could declare to the assembly what was to happen in the last days? So now, let's close out this study by sharing the gifts in the Shamayim that anyone can indeed utilize to calculate, forecast, yes, discern in advance in order to prepare for the upcoming festival of trumpets and the true turn of the year utilizing all 
of the scriptural witnesses of light with an intent to go outside and test and prove what the sun, moon, and stars actually do everywhere. Because isn't it true that the heavens are proclaiming the esteem of our Almighty Father of Lights in order to number our days? With the works of Yahuwah. Yes, those signs that are wondrous, just as Daniel knew. So, as requested, for all of our Brian friends from Yerushalayim and beyond, we were asked to forecast and map out the wondrous signs from the sun, moon, and stars from the first day of the seventh month with the Yom Teruah, or trumpets, this year, all the way up to and including the 22nd day of the seventh month. Yes, the last great day, known as the eighth day on the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. And as shared previously, here is the celestial sign with the sun, moon, and scriptural stars for the first day of the first month of Abib, this year in my area, that occurred on the pagan day of April 8th, 2020. And yes, the moon ruled the whole night through with Abib, along with the other scriptural stars in their proper pattern. Just like it did in Yerushalayim on the very same day, and as verified by many noble Bereans there, with film and Photograph footage. And as per Hanuk, 177 days later will be the celestial sign for Yom Teruah. Yes, the first day of the seventh month. Just like we see every year in my area, as proven with film and photograph footage. And this year it is forecasted to occur on the pagan day of Friday, October 2nd. And as always with Yom Teruah, the moon will now rule the whole night through with the star known as Hamal, yes, the Lamb, the Morning Star, along with the other scriptural stars in their proper pattern for this time period. And of course, it will be the same for noble Bereans in Jerusalem, who will indeed test and prove this once again this year outside in creation. Hallelujah that the seventh new moon rules the night with the morning star for Yom Teruah everywhere, just as we have previously shared. With these three witnesses from all over earth, it is the same everywhere. Yes, indeed. The moon and stars were to rule by night, and only a full moon phase will do this. But of course, only the very few are aware of this, as they have had their eyes go before all four night watches to study the word. And as such, they become very aware that the morning star and its significance annually in the heavens because the morning star can be seen in the fourth watch towards the dawn for the first day of the seventh month of Yom Teruah everywhere. And isn't it true that we all indeed have the prophetic word made more certain, which we do well to heed as this light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns? Does not this morning star rising in our hearts protect us all from the various partial prophetic timeline private interpretations based on behaviors of hubris? So please encourage each other to have our eyes go before all four night watches especially the fourth, to observe and see how the moon rules with the stars annually. As everyone on earth will be able to see towards the dawn in the fourth watch, the morning star, helping to announce 
the seventh new moon for Yom Teruah, along with the scriptural seven star clusters known as Pleiades and Orion, as it happens every year for Yom Teruah. Hallelujah that the sun, moon, and scriptural stars are indeed for signs and appointed times. In fact, very few are aware that the scriptural seven star clusters of both Pleiades and Orion can and will be seen in the fourth watch towards the dawn for the entire 22 days of the fall festival time period from the first day of trumpets all the way to the last great day, which is the 22nd day of the seventh month. And again, not just for Jerusalem, but indeed everywhere on earth. And do you recall at the start of the scriptural study video, the importance of remembering the relationship between the star known as Abib and or speak it today, as it rules with the moon. Yes, with the lesser light the whole night through and finishes in the west. And that the morning star known as the lamb, as we can see here for a first day, first month of Abib celestial sign is in the east with the sun, the greater light. Well, now let's explore why trumpets also helps to reveal how the true scriptural turn of the year can be seen by one and all, annually, everywhere. Because, and as we have already covered, everyone on earth will see the Lamb 177 days later. Now in the West, ruling with the moon, known scripturally as the lesser light. Yes, the morning star in the fourth watch towards the dawn helping to announce Yom Teruah, while Spica is now with the greater light in the east. So now, let's map out what the morning star and the star known as Abib will do and does for the 22 days from trumpets to the last great day. As this will prove that the Tekufa known as the turning circuit, does indeed go around counterclockwise in the Shamayim, just as the Hebraic pictographs reveal as well. So again, here is day one of the seventh month. Day two, three, four, five, six, seven, and day eight, which is the first Sabbath of the seventh month. Continuing on day nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and day 15, which is the first day of Sukkot. Yes, the Feast of Ingathering. On to day 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and finally, day 22 of the seventh month. Yes, the last great day. Have you noticed that by day 22 of the seventh month, Abib, yes, the branch, will also be observable in the fourth watch, just as the star Hamal has been for 22 days, along with both the scriptural seven star clusters known as Pallades and Orion in the fourth watch. Hallelujah for these signs of the sun, moon, and stars that guide us to and through the appointed times annually. Yes, the appointed times of Yahuwah, which indeed are an annual circuit. For those who test and prove all things outside in creation. 
in order to prove annually how the sun, moon, and stars are designed to tell time in their designated scriptural seasons. And isn't it just wonderful that our Father of Lights, Yahuwah himself, gives us so many witnesses from the vantage point of Earth on the turning of the year. Even the seasons scream out in regards to witnesses as it relates to the true turn of the year. Because isn't it scripturally, astronomically, etymologically, and empirically true that Yahuwah and his creation knows their appointed times? And isn't it alarming that the many from the past, like today, continue to hide this by changing the word of Yahuwah? Just like our only teacher, the Messiah Yahushua, warned us about in advance. We continue to call upon the name that these scriptural study videos and associated articles provide value for you and your loved ones. Until next time, Yahoo willing, all the best in the name which is above all names.